Hello and welcome back to Diary of a Dropout with me, Naomi Baldson. I'm so excited to get into this week's episode, but before we do that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the response from last week. Sometimes I do these podcast episodes and they honestly flow out of me and the whole time I just have this sense of someone needed to hear that. This week's episode is going to be something that has genuinely shaped the way that I live, the way that I exist in the world and something that honestly I've been doing the work on since I was eight years old honestly. Today we're going to be diving into the topic of how can we stop caring about what others think about us and I think this is deeply personal but universally relevant. I think we as humans do not like doing things that go against the mainstream and this is because when we used to live in tribes or hunter-gatherers if we did something that went against the mainstream we'd be kicked out of that community and therefore not survive. So everything we do comes from this place of wanting to be accepted and wanting to be accepted into community and into love. And so I'm gonna offer some like practical strategies and how I believe you can stop caring about what others think. If you didn't know, I am from Jersey, which is a very small island of 100,000 people. And I think most people who live here can agree that there can be elements of a very judgmental and closed-minded society. I do genuinely believe that it is harder to be more individual and more authentic and more expressive person in places where it's not accepted. You know, you can go to Berlin and you will feel like you're not alternative enough. I So I did a podcast episode about sort of the internet and my experience with cyberbullying when I first started my podcast because I was like, people really need to know like where I'm coming from. So please go and listen to that episode. But I basically had an experience with cyberbullying um, when I was 16 and it really gave me a thick skin. And it wasn't just cyberbullying, it was like a load of other things as well that were going on at the same time. But I gained an incredibly thick skin from that and I gained a lot of experience of actually how to live um, authentically and to not allow other people's perceptions of you to alter your actions. So we're going to be talking about how we often overestimate how much people care about us, we're going to be looking at the spotlight effect and yeah and how we can cultivate the self-confidence to live authentically. Um, I think this ties in really nicely with my episode last week so again go and listen to that if you haven't already. That was all about finding your true purpose and living a life of authenticity which is exactly Exactly what this podcast is about is me taking you on the journey of me creating a life of authenticity and beauty. If you have ever felt held back from fear of judgment from others then this episode is from me to you. With these podcast episodes I always try and think what can I specifically give the audience? You know there are a lot of wellness and health and advice. There's just a lot of podcasts out there but what are things that I specifically can bring to the world that other people can't and one of my really big strengths is that I do not care what other people think and I'm going to dive into more about why and where that comes from um, in my personal life story and what the story I have told myself over time to be able to do things that might be considered a bit more out there. As always, talk about my sort of personal context. I never felt like I fitted in um, at school from like such a young age and like maybe from um, an outside perspective it looked like I did you know had friends and like everything like that but I always just felt like everyone else got like a rule book of how to be a girl or how to be like in in groups and stuff and I always just felt like I didn't get the rule book I just always felt excluded or like I don't know I just never felt like I slotted into place like everyone else did I think this is probably a really common feeling and looking back I'm just like oh, I send so much love to my past self um, because that wasn't my fault I don't know why that was necessarily but it definitely gave me a strong sense of um, who I was and I think I've always had that very like strong moral compass and I wouldn't just go along with the crowd. I definitely really value that in myself. I like to do interesting things <laughs> and I like to live my life full. The thing is that if you're going to do interesting things people are going to be interested. This year or just all the years have had to get over over and over and over again of my fear of being seen because unfortunately as much as some of us might like to we cannot live in isolation, we can't live in a vacuum, people are always going to see you in some 
aspect. People are always gonna project their perception of you onto you. That is an inevitable and we can't unfortunately get away from that. So we have to learn to live with it and we have to learn to cultivate the self-confidence and the self-compassion to live a life that we actually want regardless of those projections. Time and time again, I find myself crippled by the fear of being seen and we're gonna get into that more. First of all, I'm gonna talk about the spotlight effect and this is something that really, really has helped me over the years is that everyone is so wrapped up in their own life and their inner world um, and they're projecting that out onto the world. So we think if I do this thing, if I make this move, if I do this weird thing walking down the street or if I say this like strange thing, people are gonna like, we just basically think that people are a hell of a lot more interested in us than they actually are. Thomas Gilovic um, from Cornell University did a study of the egocentric bias in estimates of the salience of one's own actions and appearances. Basically the prevalence of this like cognitive bias is that we think that we've got like a spotlight on us um, because we're so just concerned with our own actions and but every other person also has that. Therefore, people just don't care as much as you think they do. And like, when have you, when can you ever think of someone else's most embarrassing moment? You never ever think about other people to that extent. When you clock that no one is actually that interested in you and no one cares about what you're doing that much, it fucking frees you. Like that is the most freeing realization is that, oh, like I can do like the most like random stuff and no one actually cares. And a lot of this has come from like wide perspective and deep inner work and realizing that A, none of this is as concrete or real as we think it is and do with that what you will. Sort of looking at life like a bit of a video game. You know, we have these avatars, we dress them up, we move up the levels, we move down the levels, we have random side quests and nothing's that deep and I would like to devote my life to a life of experimenting and a life of trying different things and having as many different experiences as I can in this actually very very short amount of time and this is where death can be really useful. Um, I was listening to a podcast, I won't take credit for this thought piece, I will put it in the description but in it he was saying this is where death becomes really useful because you are not going to be lying on your deathbed and thinking fuck I wish I played it small I wish I played it safe I wish I took less risks I wish I cared more about what people thought of me and imagine looking back over your life and thinking I could have done so much but I was so terrified of what others thought of me that I didn't imagine thinking that and this sounds morbid and intense but it really just puts it into perspective of like no you need to do what your life's calling is regardless of what other people think just this reality of perception that people forget that we are all so wrapped up in our inner worlds each in our individual little lives we think we're the center of the universe and we are the center of our own universe but the judgment from others is just the judgment of others and that is their worldview that they are projecting onto you one of the quotes that i i'm pretty sure i genuinely saw this quote when I was like 11 and I have lived by it ever since was that people are going to talk about you no matter what you do so you may as well make it what you want to do and I remember hearing that and I was like oh my gosh and I think that's actually when I started my YouTube channel for the first time because I was like I want to make videos like I want to share my makeup and my like vlogs online or whatever it was that I was doing because I was like do you know what that's what I want to do and if people like take issue with that then like who cares because it's what I want to do at the end of the day like if people are gonna you know talk badly about you or whatever you may as well make it like what you actually want to do. I'm gonna go on to talk about some practical strategies because it's all very well me sitting here to be like just don't like oh you care about what people think just don't just stop um that's not how it works um sometimes you can have these like light bulb moments but honestly, like everything, like a relationship, like anything that you're working towards, you have to make the small little actionable decisions every single day in order to get there. So to get to a point of not caring about what people think, we can implement some practical strategies to cultivate this 
piece. You're probably sick of me telling you to meditate, but meditation, journaling, anything that is a self-awareness practice, being aware of your unconscious or subconscious patterns of behavior that lead you to make certain decisions, being like, oh, I tend to isolate myself and not allow myself to be seen because of this. And just having that self-awareness. Honestly, self-awareness is one of the biggest um, things for leadership and for pretty much doing anything. You need to be aware of your own energy and boundaries and, and being able to challenge the negative thoughts because so often like the the fear of judgment or the people that we're scared of judging us, I'm gonna get onto that in a moment why I'm like, the people. But the people we're scared of judging us, that's not actually what we're scared of. I personally believe that we judge ourselves and that we have an inner critic, but often that voice is not actually your own. It comes in the form of a parent or a teacher or a friend, someone somewhere once told you that you were not worthy, that you were not whatever it is, and you internalize that, unfortunately, and that speaks through you in your inner critic. Being able to challenge those negative thoughts and just not believing everything that you think, and that comes from meditation. You know, sometimes I can be in a really just like grumpy, it's giving luteal phase, like it's giving, I don't wanna speak to anyone. I, I mean, I even had it last night, I was going to sleep and I just had this like narrative of, of negative self-talk and I was like, that's not even true. And I was able to stop myself and be like, I'm just gonna not believe that thought because not everything that you think is fact and it's not true. And it's just a matter of your experience and it's just an appearance in consciousness. And that is what non-dual meditation um, practices really help you see is that it is it is simply an appearance in consciousness. I mean, everything is, but I think it's extra helpful in recognizing those negative thoughts and just being like, I don't need to believe that and I don't need to internalize that shame. And I think it's also a case of building your self-confidence and your self-compassion and your self-love because I think I said this in a past episode, but the only person who can ever give you unconditional love is yourself. The only person who who can love you the way you want to be loved is yourself and of course we need other people and other people are wonderful and independence is a lo- lovely and community is lovely and blah 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 what I always say but your relationship with yourself is the most important one you will have throughout your life because you are the only person who has waken up and gone to sleep with you every night of your life on the nights where you were so upset crying didn't think you were going to see it through you were the person who picked yourself up time and time and time again and no one else can say that you have been there throughout your whole life and it is fundamentally the most important relationship just had to change microphone so we're back to the good old reliable self-love is the most important love you will ever have in your life and it feels so good you know, that love that you so easily pour into other people over and over again and don't get what you want in return, you can just give to yourself. And in that, it creates just so much more space, so much more space for love for other people as well, once you know how to give that to yourself. Back to the self-compassion piece is that people who are 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 chatting shit about you are not being kind to you in whatever way are deeply unhappy with their lives and when I was going through the bullying what kept me honestly sane was just thinking I would never no matter how hard or shit my life is I would never comment something on social media that would make someone feel like shit or like they are less than worthy because I have morals <laughs> and have enough self-love. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and say I have the most perfect self-love, but I'm on the journey of trying to love myself better and more and cultivating that relationship. But I have enough self-love to not project that. Yeah, the people who talk down onto you don't. And that is really, really sad. And you can send them love on their journey and hope that they find peace in themselves because it's true because anyone who is happy with themselves and their life does not do that does not drag other people down and also anyone who is doing better than you will never drag you down and don't take advice from people who have not been where you're trying to go the most successful podcaster would not look at me and think what the fuck is she doing because they've been 
at the start. Same with me. I would never look at, at someone, at a beginner in anything of the things that I'm good at and be like, what are they doing? Because everyone starts somewhere. Literally everyone starts somewhere. So just take comfort in the fact that if anyone is ever rude or mean about you, like they're probably doing worse than you. Reducing social media consumption, reducing unhealthy social media consumption of things that bring up like judgment or comparison for you. Sometimes I'll be scrolling through my Instagram and someone's post will come up and I'll just be like, oh, I don't really like align with that anymore. And I'll just unfollow them straight away. And this consistent awareness of the things that you're consuming and how they affect you and how they affect your relationship with yourself is I think really paramount for stopping caring about what people think about you because you don't have to create drama. You don't have to create stress. You can just simply walk away with your peace intact. Again, to cultivate that level of self-confidence in yourself so that you don't need external validation so that, you know, it's this idea of the courage to be disliked. I am fully okay with the fact that people might not like me, but this quote just has always stuck with me. I feel like I'm doing a lot of quotes this episode, love that. If outside validation is your only source of nourishment, you will be hungry for the rest of your life. And like I said, you are the only person who can give you unconditional love. So once you can once you can diminish the need for external validation, you can then stop caring about what other people think because it actually doesn't matter. You have everything you need within yourself and what a beautiful place to eventually get to. Okay, so this is sort of what I've been wanting to speak about the whole episode, but I've been like saving it for a little segment. When we say people, you know, I think a lot of people are like... <laughs> oh it's all a paradox when we think like oh but what will people think who are people is it is it a general umbrella term for society is it ex exes is it old friends is it your parents really like hone in on who are the people you care about what of their opinion. I've done a lot of work on making my circle a lot smaller and more selective. And this isn't in like a mean or like exclusive way. It's just, I refuse to have anyone in my life who does not genuinely want the best for me. Because if you come away from spending time with someone and you don't feel uplifted, why have you had that interaction? And just hone in on who those people are. Because I, of course, care about what people think but those people are the people in my circle who I deeply respect and love and who have achieved amazing things and are just the best and I love so much and that is my community and that is what I've created for myself. The people around me are so good and so wonderful and add so much to my life and if you find yourself worrying about oh what will my friends think what if they don't support me that my friends will judge me for that those are not your friends because friends and partners and family members should support you no matter what through all your weird life changes through every decision that you want to make they should support you and want the best for you and maybe support is not the right word but they just always have your best interests at heart and they might yes indeed challenge some of the decisions that you make out of a place of love and because they want the best for you sometimes it is hard for us to see these things ourselves and we do need people to intervene and to help us and I think there are pros and cons to this you know I have definitely gone through phases of being like I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks and I will do whatever I want and that is a weakness because it is important that we take our loved ones advice seriously because like I said we cannot always see these things for ourselves or if we can maybe we're not ready to let go of that projection but we can take these opinions on board but we don't necessarily have to take them um and it's just a fine line it's a fine balance to walk like any of choosing whose advice to take our pros and cons of a small circle because 
the relationships that I cultivate are very deep and when they don't work out or you know when someone shows me their true colors I show them the door and and that is sort of almost more painful because of how selective I am and because I believe that I'm like a really good judge of character and I always feel like I can tell someone's true intentions and then when that is not the case um it's quite yeah shocking so you know pros and cons of a small circle but we move I mean like I always say you become the people you surround yourself with so make sure those people are good and be the energy that you want to attract because you can't say like oh I want a partner who's this and that and blah 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 and not be that yourself you can't be someone who's like oh I want a friend who is like this and not be that yourself you know you have to embody what you want to bring into your life if you want to bring in more fun into your life you have to be more fun next I'm gonna go on to share some listener insights from my Instagram a couple weeks ago I asked some questions um so yeah I just thought we'd go through them so the first one was do you care what people People think 62% of people said yes and it affects me negatively 5% of people said yes and it affects me positively and 33% of people just said no I don't care what people think um, I love this question and I'm not surprised that 62% of people said yes it affects me negatively I think so many of us hold ourselves back over this fear of judgment I hope that this episode can help you to see that a no one actually cares what you're doing um, and b those who matter don't mind and those who mind don't matter and like I said before people should hold space for you in every different phase of life and being human and just life is so difficult in of itself so I would just really encourage you just to try and take the weight off of the world's judgment off of you we are going to be here for a really short time in like a hundred years all the people who once walked this earth will be dead and you will just be yeah you know spoke right okay sorry I always talk about okay morbid things but like it needs to be spoken about okay and I'm not and I'm not shy of talking about them. Um, you'll be remembered for like a few generations and then that that will be it for most of us. Um, and this isn't me saying, you know, you have to do mad shit and leave a legacy and you have to be written about in the history books. Maybe if that's what you want, you know, it just puts things into perspective. Like we're not that important. We're like a tiny speck in this like huge universe. We literally live on a floating rock. None of us know how we got here. Like, and I think this is where my sort of existentialism comes in really useful because I'm just like, nothing matters but in the best way possible right you can you can sit there and be so like nihilistic and be like fuck nothing matters like nothing I do but like also you can look at the you know that meme that's like looking out of the bus and it's like oh you can be like nothing matters so that means I can do whatever I want and that is so freeing and why not make that the best most positive most full most fun most blissful most pleasurable version of your life that you possibly can and live out your days in the best way that you can say after me how you spend your days is how you spend your life the next is would you live your life differently if you stopped caring about how you were perceived 92 percent of people said yes and only eight percent of people said no that is wild to me and maybe that's because i just have such a strong sense of not giving a fuck but if you would live your life differently based on how other people perceive you you're the only one that has to live your life day in day out you're the one that you wake up with and go to sleep with you have your inner experience you create your external experience and if that is being dictated by how other people perceive you please again I urge you take it off and then the next one was any other thoughts questions or comments I think it's possible to find the positive and negative in caring about what other people think I think until COVID I cared but something about the pandemic I don't really care now that covid was a huge huge turning point for me and i think it does sort of again come from this sort of existential place we went into lockdown and everyone thought the world was ending i was like oh like i probably won't be going back to school like the world has gone like literally mad and no one wants to like talk about covid now like everyone's literally like pretend that it didn't happen um i think we are collectively avoiding it because it was so painful for so many of us but something about lockdown i 
fucking loved. It was like I'd been taken out of like the most like one of the hardest ages. I think being a 15 year old is just it's it's really how like it's a really really hard age um if you're 15 just know that it gets better like it 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 gets better I promise so I was 15 when we went into lockdown and I was like oh like nothing matters the world is ending so I should just do what I want to do I started posting all these like weird tiktoks like I started that's when I had my spiritual awakening for the first time I really just sought the best out of life that I could at that time because of the extreme suffering um and because of the isolation um and that was a really really big turning point for me actually and I remember like sort of coming back into society when everything was going back to a bit more normal and I really carried that sense of not caring through I think that's just the best way to be honestly Um, but I really really agree with that COVID really shaped something big in me I had one more listener insight I feel like more people tell you you shouldn't care what people think the less the root cause of the insecurity is addressed and so less internal healing can be done that is so true like because like I said, I can sit here and be like, oh, just stop caring about what people think. But like, where is that coming from? Where is that insecurity coming from? Like, why do you believe that you can't do this certain thing? Why do you think that, like, what is it actually holding you back? Because a lot of the time, it's actually not the fear of being perceived. It's something internal that you haven't worked on. And that's completely okay. But it's just being aware of that. Yeah, my last point is, is to align with your core values and judgment falls away. Align with your core values and judgment falls away. When you are living an authentic expression of yourself, A, it's almost like people see that and they don't judge it. Maybe sometimes they do. My personal experience is the more authentic I've got, like people actually can't, it's such a weird dichotomy, but people just can't take issue with it because I'm just like, if you don't allow things to be embarrassing, they're not embarrassing. If you don't value the people who are chatting shit's opinion, then it it doesn't matter. What you put value and awareness on is what creates the suffering or the pleasure. Again, encourage you to listen to last week's episode. I thought it was a banging episode. Like I was so proud of it. Um, So please go and listen to that if you want to figure out how you can find your purpose and listen to it all about how I found my purpose. If you want to hear about my cyberbullying experience, you can go back and listen to like, I think it's episode seven or something. We have come a long way since then. And I have overcome a lot of fear about being perceived, posting on social media, just like a lot. I've worked through really a lot in that aspect so it might be quite fun to go back and see the growth but yeah again thank you so much for listening today for supporting me on this crazy journey and supporting me every week just sharing my mad insights and everything that I learn whilst being a random little temporary vessel on a floating rock trying to live the most authentic expression of my soul's desires um (laughs) I am well aware that I've turned up the dial on the woo-woo factor and I'm loving it. I'm fucking loving it. So yeah, please go and follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Diary of a Dropout Podcast. Fill out the Google Forms if you've got anything you specifically want me to chat about. I love hearing from you. So yeah, please send me a message if you want. Again, thank you so much for listening and joining me every single week. I can't wait to see you next Thursday. All my love, Noom.